Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be discussing and sharing my experiences that I had for the past six months in medical school, which is essentially half of my first year in med school. So this video, I don't want to waste your time. I want to take it in a very organized fashion. So this video, I'll break it down into five major parts. The first part, I'll be sharing about the online classes experience. And in the second part, I will do subject wise breakdown on how important each topic is in every single subject. And third, I will be sharing the exam experiences that I had giving my exams online. And fourth, I will be talking about what to expect in the face to face and offline classes as shared by my seniors. And fifth, I will be sharing some final thoughts which might be helpful for you to apply in your own life, in your own medical school journey. Let's get started. First, let's get started with my online class experience. Many people across the world told that online classes are not good. Online classes do not make really qualified medical professionals. That might be true for a certain extent, but it's not true for the case of my college and where I studied and how I approach these online classes. And let me tell you why. This online class status is really a personalized thing. If you are really interested, if you are really committed to studying medicine, then there's nothing that can stop you from gaining the same amount of knowledge that you would have gained if you were in the real face to face classes offline. But some of them might debate that you did not have access to the laboratories, the anatomy cadavers, to the physiology laboratories, to the histology laboratories. Yes, I agree on all that. But all of those can be covered later when we get back to our college, right? So with that perspective, me and my friends, once again, this is a personal opinion. With that in mind, me and my friends, we went on to form a group. We created a group, we set out goals, we discussed and we came out with a lot of new ideas to enhance the online learning experience. We were not only listening to the online lectures, but we went a mile beyond that. We thought out of the box to apply certain logics that can make the online learning experience more interesting. Let me tell you some concepts that we applied, some tricks that we applied so that we can make this really more effective. Starting with flashcards. That was a complete game changer for us. Flashcards significantly reduce our time to study because we need not take notes. And about flashcards, I'll be doing a video soon so that you can also try out that technique. And if it works for you, you can go ahead and practice anything or everything through it. So we discovered flashcards and after flashcards, we did Google meets. So if you're going to sit alone and study at your home, you're going to have a lot of distractions that is natural. And that is supposed to happen because home is a place where a lot of things happen, family related. There will be a lot of problems. You'll never know what is happening, but everything is again, personalized. It is up to the person's status or the person's opinions, but According to my situation, I had to create a Google Meet with my friends. So we were three friends. We sat in Google Meets every single day and we studied together. Even though we are not discussing, we used to keep our cameras on so that we can see each other studying and get motivated to study. Through that way, I was not feeling alone that I am the only one going through this online experiences. There are friends of mine who are going through the same thing. If we come together, it will be really more productive and more fun. When you're going to take a five minute break, you chit chat, you ask each other a difficult question, you challenge yourself. So that made it a really, really fun experience. So this was what we did to make online classes better. But from the I college, we had a lot of different things that kept us really busy, starting from lab activities. You might wonder how can there be a lab activity when the entire class is offline. Lab activities means group discussions, discussing with your friends, creating bonds with strangers. So through that, we were able to connect with a lot of people and develop more ideas. Let's take biochemistry. For biochemistry, we have an activity called small group discussions. So for example, the doctor gives us a disease, hypercholesterolemia, and they give us the sources to read the disease from, to search about the disease. And they give us one week of time. So after that one week, we must make sure that we collect resources, concepts, facts about all these things, discuss with our group, create PowerPoint presentations and ready to answer a case. So on the day of the test, depending on the topic, for example, let's say hypercholesterolemia, the doctor is going to give you a case based on it. 
and that case you must answer and present in front of the doctor and in front of your group and a group has around 30 to 40 people so by doing this we developed the skills of leadership we developed the skills of presenting we developed the skills of time management on being time to the class so these were some of the advantages of biochemistry lab and same applies for physiology now Majorly, a lot of people would say anatomy cadavers, you missed it, you missed your dissections. And for that, we had videos on YouTube, we had 3D models available online, which we can take and which we can take screenshot of and annotate ourselves. That was one of the major game changers. We take screenshots and we annotate the parts. Even when you are in the lab, you cannot annotate there. You can just see there and go through it in your mind. But in videos, you can literally screenshot and write it down in your iPad or type it down in your laptop. That way it stays in long term memory. But definitely you need the cadaver in front of you to make it stand in long term for you, right? But obviously, since now we are in the college, we will be doing that. But for the sake of online classes, that was one of the most efficient ways. And through that way, we were able to get good scores through on the exams. So that was about online classes and how really interesting it was for me and my friends personally. It might have been different for you, but once again, it depends on how you approach it. With that being said, let's move on to the second part of this video. Now let's discuss about the subject wise breakdown. So we had four major subjects and three minor subjects, physiology, anatomy, biochemistry, histology were the major subjects and the minor subjects were arts and science of medicine, primary health care and research. So let me start with the minor subjects so that I can finish them off quickly. Research we had to create a capsule proposal. A proposal means something that you must make ready to start your research. It's like the basic form of research that encapsulates your ideas, your thoughts, the theory that you followed and everything. And for this, you might think research needs a laboratory, research needs a place you must go and do it. No, before that, there's a lot of work to do. And that work is a research proposal. And that is the one which we did through online mode. And for that, we had a group of 30 people who worked together, who shared their ideas through Gmates, through Zoom calls, and we made the research proposal possible. And for arts and science of medicine, we had amazing doctors talk about amazing concepts related to arts and science of medicine. We also had an activity in which we had to watch a movie, a movie called The Sister's Keeper. We had to watch that movie and reflect on what we learned from the movie. And based on our reflection, we had a group assessment, which was graded at the end, which was really emotional. The movie was really emotional and it's a must watch if you're a medical student or if you're anyone, you'll be really touched by it. And third, we had primary health care in which we understood the hierarchy of organization from family medicine, community medicine, the five star quality of a physician and many more. All these three minor subjects were really interesting and practical. We did not sit and read every day for these subjects because it was something that we must think and discuss with our friends. Now, moving on to the major subjects, let's start with physiology because that is the high content subject after anatomy. So for physiology, the toughest one, the most longest one was neurophysiology and cardiac physiology. So for these, we had a lot of number of chapters. And one thing I want to mention here clearly, if you are a medical student, please don't read PowerPoint presentations and settle for it. Because a lot of my friends who read PowerPoint presentations and settle for it are having zero knowledge about the concepts in the long term or the overall view of the concept. But me and some of my friends and many students in my college, they read the book. We follow the book called Guyton and Hall. I'll link, leave the link in description so that you can check it out for the PDF. So that book is really good. It is really basic level, but it gives you understanding of the entire complexity of physiology. So we followed that book line by line. We made flashcards. We practiced those flashcards and we gave our exams. We were able to score well. And at the same time, we were able to relate each system and each physiological system to each other and keep the concept in our long term memory. So that was about physiology. Biochemistry. Biochemistry obviously is a dry subject for a lot of people because it involves a lot of mugging up. But biochemistry has more to it because it is completely connected to physiology. Biochemistry and physiology are really mutual. Actually, all the four subjects, major subjects are really mutual. But biochemistry is a subject that 
we must listen in the class we must look videos so we looked videos we listened in the class and finally before exams we read the books we made important points we did flash cards and we were able to give the exam and again don't settle for powerpoint presentations read the book listen to the class so that you can be well versed about biochemistry and it will become really easy a major mistake a lot of us do even i do is study a lot of things in the biochemistry book not even leaving a single line and making important points for every single line that's the wrong approach we must know what the main concepts are and study those alone for biochemistry and that we can realize only when we attend the class properly and listen so that we can go through all the important topics set by our doctors that was about biochemistry and histology i'm going to take really less time because histology is very simple cellular levels mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum what type of cell is this epithelium non non keratinized keratinized it's going to be very simple you can go through it you can just flow through physiology very easily by yourself and finally anatomy anatomy is going to take a lot of visualization in which you have to draw things trust me my seniors and a lot of people across the internet and across the world study anatomy by drawing the diagrams for example let's take the triangles of the neck draw the triangles of the neck draw the borders draw the con contents inside for example the carotid triangle the borders of carotid triangle draw the contents the carotid sheath the carotid artery internal jugular vein draw everything so that that stays in your long term memory that is the best piece of advice or trick for anatomy so these were the major subjects and minor subject wise breakdown for the first sem that i learnt that i must apply more in the second sem so that i can be more efficient now moving on to the third part of this video in this part i want to talk about the exam experience i had in online mode so you might think online mode we might copy everything no it doesn't work like that we had to have two devices one device for giving the exam through our platform through our college's platform and another device to log in through zoom which was we must keep in a perfect angle so that both our face our body and the screen of our exam giving device is covered so see how strict it was a doctor would be monitoring us throughout the course of the exam and in our laptop or the device that we are giving our exam which we are going to type our answers which we are going to select the options that device will be locked the software is developed in such a way that the device will be locked and if you are opening another tab or if you are exiting the exam it will be notified and your exams will be terminated all of a sudden that is going to be really unfortunate and no one no one has to do that right because we need good good scores we need to learn the concepts and we need to develop good discipline so to do that my college they had a very wonderful system to make sure students are being disciplined and they do the exams properly that was my exam experience and to talk about the subject part of examens experience 60 to 70% of the questions in the next exams are repeated questions if you're going to analyze the questions that you faced in your first exam you're going to do better in the next exam as soon as an exam gets over just make down the points that you were not able to answer list down the questions that came that you were feeling confused list down the questions that you felt like you knew the answer but you were doubtful about list it down sit with your friends discuss come up with the analysis write down all the solutions and just before the next exam take that sheet of paper go through it and give the next exam and i'll bet on it you will be doing easily 20 to 30% better than your previous exam because all the exams have at least 50% of repeating questions only the other 50% is going to be new which you have to think about which you should have studied this is one of the major things that i learned during the online exams that i gave now moving on to the fourth part of the video fourth part is what to expect in face to face and in the second semester so second semester is going to be only of four major subjects that i told and plus one additional minor subject a heavyweight subject neuroanatomy but a really interesting subject so the second sem is going to be relatively less in content and weightage but it is going to be too complex and uh vast because the concepts like renal physiology the endocrinology are all complex concepts but at the same time interesting concepts to learn so that is what we are going to face when you take anatomy we are going to see abdomen we are going to see uh, upper limb and lower limb please note that these topics are really interesting they might be vast but they are interesting and to do that you must make use of your holidays 
to learn extra to watch videos and that is what i think that i will face in second sem so for that i am preparing from now onwards i am starting to watch videos related to renal physiology and endocrinology and neurophysiology and i would suggest that if you are in a holiday now and you want to start something for the next semester please go through your syllabus and start from now because now is the right time not tomorrow not next minute not next hour now is the correct time that you must start doing whatever you need to do to get better final thoughts about this video that i'm about to share to you is something motivational and inspirational for me what i use as inspiration to study many people feel like they can't allot the time to study but instead they spend a lot of time on social media or by partying with friends whatever the case i'm not complaining about anyone i'm not advising i'm just sharing my suggestion what i use as an inspiration to go through those times and not to feel guilty or to be more productive to be more efficient so let me list them down number 1 think about my parents my family how much they've worked hard to get me to this position where i can work towards achieving my dream where i can live my life enjoy my life by doing things that i love so number one think about your parents and how hard and sacrifice they are every moment they breathe is for us so i think about my parents number two the passion the passion to serve the society to to help people out there you know the population of the earth is around 6 to 7 billion and almost only millions like 100 200 millions are really well settled the rest more than 2 to 3 billion people are really at poverty and they don't know what they are going to do in the next moment when you realize that when you look at everything from a bigger perspective we can focus on the smaller things and those smaller things are going to help us solve those bigger problems that the world faces these two are the biggest motivation that i have and third one obviously your friends the friends you surround yourself with is going to have a bigger impact than anything else so surround yourself with people who are like minded or make people around you like minded if they agree to share your ideas motivate them to study well motivate them to be with you to cooperate with you to question you to challenge you to make you score better to make you understand more better so these are the final thoughts about this video and 6 months of first year is done and other 6 exciting months is waiting for me. So after those 6 exciting months I will be through my first year of medical school and I will be back with the analysis of 1 year in medical school and I will see you at that time. Thank you.